Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions. We are talking about the set B of our official mock papers and uh, we are talking about the chapter 4 test technique questions. In fact, in our previous tutorial, we covered few of the questions from here. Now it's journey to continue with the remaining few of the questions and we'll be targeting some of the great questions as a part of today's tutorial. So I'll look forward to try understanding the tips and tricks for that as well. And uh, I'm sure that is going to add a lot of value to your understanding and give you great insights about how to tackle these test techniques questions in the examination. So the very first question of the day is question number 22. Uh, daily radiation recorder uh, for plants produces a Shunsign X score based on combination of number of hours a plant, uh, a number of hours a plant is exposed to the sun, which is like three categories, uh, below three hours, three to six hours, and above six hours. And the average intensity of the sunshine can be classified into four categories that is very low, low, medium, and high. Now, given the following test cases, uh, what is the minimum number of additional test cases that are needed to ensure full coverage of all valid input equivalence partitions? Now, a lot of us uh, certainly have this confusion that when we come to the equivalence partition, we uh, start targeting the output or sometimes we start thinking that when you say uh, full coverage, does that really mean all possible combinations? Do not forget that exhaustive testing is impossible and test techniques is an answer to that particular principle that how do you reduce the number of cases, right? And uh, the whole agenda of these techniques to basically come up with minimum number of test cases with full coverage, right, at any point of time. So you don't really have to come out with uh, n number of possibilities, n number of combinations to frame uh, the test cases count. So you should always think that what's the least number of test cases to achieve everything. So altogether, what they're trying to ask you here is that they've got three test cases here, T1, T2, and T3, and uh, what more they would need in order to have everything covered as per the scenario, right? So as per the scenario, the scenario says we have three categories for uh, the plants uh, exposed to sun and uh, four categories for the intensity of the sun sign. So if I see T1 here, right, it says 1.5 hours, which falls under the first category below three hours and intensity is very low. So very low is done and less than three hours is done. T2 is 7.0, which is going above six hours, which is the third per range and medium is also covered here and score has nothing to do with don't worry about that because outputs are different right it can be different at any point uh, we have to cover all valid inputs can you see that it is written in big and bold right that is the main subject which we have to target t3 is again 0.5 which is uh, less than three hours and very low repeating exactly the t1 so uh, with these three test cases what we observe is less than three hours and greater than six hours is covered. So one range from the time or the duration is not yet covered, which is three to six hours, right? And second, on the intensity part, we have covered very low, low, sorry, very low and medium, but we have not covered low and high, right? So a lot of people say that one test will be required more to cover the range between three to six hours and they will pick the right answer as one. But no, that's not correct because intensity is also an input because sun intensity is being applied to the plant and how much sun was exposed to it and with what intensity, right? So your medium, sorry, your low and high are certainly being included. So should I go for three test cases? No, that's also wrong. Why would you do that? Because if you see here, each test is taking both the parameters, the number of hours and the intensity in one test. So you will take one more test to cover three to six hours. And with that, you will cover one of these, either low or high, right? Either low or high. And that covers your three to six or say, for example, low. Now you would need one more test to cover the remaining intensity, which is high. So you need two tests to, you know, have full coverage of all the valid inputs, valid inputs, right? Again, you don't have to consider invalid ones, which is kind of, you know, not listed here. So 
you would need two more tests uh, one to go with three to six hours with low and another one can be from any category uh, of the you know number of hours and with high so this is how we cover uh, just with two test cases the remaining three parameters right so the right answer here is b two test cases would be required to have all input or all valid input coverage of this particular scenario i hope that makes pretty much sense if in case not drop me a comment okay continue with the next question this question comes from the boundary value analysis and uh, you have to be very careful when it comes to boundary value analysis because now you have two concepts two point analysis and three point analysis so you have to be curious about if they specify two point or three point and based on that you will be going ahead in fin case you do not have it specified in the question then go with two point analysis okay so smart home app measures the average temperature in the house over the previous week and provides feedback to the occupants on their environment friendliness based on this temperature the feedback for different average temperatures ranges uh, to the nearest degree celsius uh, should be uh, so these are the various ranges where you can see up to 10 degree uh, 11 to 15 16 to 19 20 to 22 but the last one says above 22 that means 23 and more right this is how they slightly trick things around and get you confused and the options will be supporting that trick always so using boundary value analysis only minimum and maximum value is of course what you always do uh, which of the following set of test inputs provides the highest level of boundary coverage so minimum and maximum is the hint to you that we are talking about two point analysis because in a three point you have minimum uh, minimum plus one and then maximum right three values on each boundary so in on and out so here they're just saying minimum and max which in turn is telling you that using two point analysis so quickly i've got a table here for you just for your reference to understand that how exactly these ranges can be put on the paper and got the you know table created but for such questions you know when it comes to boundary value analysis the data input what is provided to you is actually giving you all the boundary values right 10 is a boundary value 11 is 15 is 16 is 19 is 20 is 22 is but not the last one because that's where they have not given you the value they said above 22 which is 23 is the boundary value 22 is covered in the previous range right so given this table given this information uh given this information you don't really need a table but as i'm explaining you i need this table so that you can have a reference there <clears throat> now they would just want to figure out which set of test inputs provides the highest level again do not expect to cover all the uh, partition values sorry all the boundary values they said highest because they also know that our options do not cover all of them so all you have to do is pick up each of the options and check which covers the maximum number of boundary values so is zero a boundary value in option a no the reason is the boundary is less than or equal to 10 and you know the temperatures can be negative so don't stop there at zero right a lot of people think that yeah zero is the last value but they forget that temperatures can be negative minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 and so on so zero is not a boundary value 11 is 20 is 22 is 23 is. so option a covers four boundary values b uh, nine is it a boundary value no 15 yes 19 yes 23 yes is 100 a boundary value no right the boundary values are the one which are mentioned on the top in the table or even in the scenario given to you so b covers only three boundary values out of all the given one number c uh, option c size 10 16 19 22 23 all of them are boundary values right as per the table you always have these five boundary values listed here so c covers five uh, boundary values out of all this given to you and uh, coming to d it says 14 14 is not a boundary value 15 is 18 is not 19 is 21 is not and 22 is which is again covering only three boundary values uh, from the one which are listed here so I think that's very pretty much straightforward and clear that the right answer here is c that is 10 16 19 22 and 23 are covering the highest uh, level of boundary coverage as per the given scenario 
right? This is all you have to do to save your time and be tricky enough to you know tackle those uh, questions coming in the examination and be accurate and right with your exact responses, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with remaining questions on chapter four in our upcoming tutorials. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.